Hi there, let's have a look at how license key verification works in the Cryptlens platform. This is based on an existing tutorial, which I've linked in the description field below. Just three, three things are necessary to get this up and running. First, you need to have a Cryptlens account, which will give us access to access tokens and some other parameters that are needed later on. The second thing is the client API, and this is just a small library that you include into your own uh, application. and uh, it, it will then allow you to check uh, verify licenses, for example, check uh, the features uh, and some other things. And finally, uh, we need to add a short code snippet that will do the actual work. Uh, and uh, we'll just change some parameters and uh, uh, we're ready to go. So let's go back to, I have a tab open here. So I've already logged into my own account. And uh, the first thing I'd like to look at are the WebAPI variables. So as you can see, the first part of the tutorial is that we need an RSA public key and an access token. And those two values are provided here, the RSA public key and the access token. And the last parameter is the product ID. For the product ID, we need to have a product. So I assume that you've already created a product. In my case, it's a sample product and uh, as you can see, the product ID is provided here. So now we have all the parameters necessary to get this up and running. Now let's jump to uh, a new .NET Framework application. And um, the first step here is to install the uh, client API. And the easiest way to do so is to use the Nougat Package Manager. So we click on the Browse tab and we type SKGL extension. Here we go, here's the library. Let's go ahead and install it. And soon we'll have to, okay, accept. Now this should be done, I think. Yes, now the client API has been added. And uh, the final step is to include the, this code snippet. So since I'm using C Sharp, just take this C sharp snippet. So as you can see, there are some errors here and uh, this is due to the um, missing namespaces. So let's go ahead and add them. Okay, so there are just three things we need to do. Since this was just a, um, a basic code or um, a template code snippet, we need to change the the RSA public key and the access token. And again, oh, of course, the, the product ID, that's also necessary. So let's start with the RSA public key. Uh, we type it here and uh, okay, so our RSA public key is done. Uh, the access token, done, and the product ID. So for the product ID, we need to go back to our product, just copy this value here. We're almost done. The, the only thing we need to change is this license key. And uh, <clears throat> a good practice here is that you should never hard code a license key into, into your application. This is something that your customer should provide you with. But for this tutorial, I will um, hard code it just to make things simpler. So I already have a, a key here. Let's copy it and, and paste it here. So for example, if you're, develop, if you're developing desktop apps, you would have a, a pop-up with a the text box that uh, asks, you, asks your users for this key or for com console apps, you can just use um, the command lines, uh, co co the console. So th there's essentially uh, a lot of ways of allowing your customers to provide you with this uh, license key. But as I said, it should never be hard coded. So let's see if this works. It worked, but we just forgot to add a breakpoint. Or in this case, let's type console read line since this is um, essentially has the similar effect. Let's start it.
Okay, so now it seems like we received an error, and uh, this is included in the... So there are some troubleshooting steps, which we'll now go through to try to figure out what kind of error it is. Let's go back to the tutorial. Okay. I realize there is a problem with the code snippet. So for this, this will be uh, updated later, but um, essentially what we need to do here is that we need to have, uh, let's pause it. Seems to be a typo in the tutorial, but this is easily fixed. So we add like this. And then essentially the reason why this doesn't work is because essentially in this line here, we're asking if everything is correct, throw an error. And this is not the way we want it to work. So you need to add a negate the result. So we want to say not. So if, if it doesn't work, then we will throw, uh, throw an error. Otherwise it will proceed as usual. So if the result is not, is not null, if no errors occurred and if, um, or if an error occurred, and if there was an issue with the signature verification, then we throw an error. So the, the change here is that we need to add this explanation mark, and otherwise it's uh, good to go. Let's run it again. <clears throat> License key is valid, so now it works. Great. As, and as you can see, if you change something in the license, or actually, uh, to make things much more interesting, let's say that you think uh, that this key has been um, uh, has been uh, leaked out or is, has been misused, which you can do is so you can block that key. The key is blocked. Let's run it again. As you can see, the license doesn't work as expected. So to sum up, in order for this, uh, for this tutorial, or essentially the, the three main takeaways from this tutorial is that the first thing you need is uh, to gain, uh, get hold of these uh, three parameters. They're necessary to be able to identify or in order to be able to, for, for CryptoLens to, to know that, uh, to be able to locate your product and, and be able to, to verify, know that which product you, that you want to use and um, uh, and so on. So these parameters are necessary. They're like uh, the, the configuration. And uh, the second part was that we needed this uh, client API. And the client API makes um, uh, communication with the license, uh, with the CryptLens uh, uh, much easier. So uh, for verification purposes, if you want to verify license, you would be using this client API. And finally, the last step is to include this code snippet as we discovered, it was a mistake in this code, but this is probably going to be fixed soon. So, um, but um, once we have this code in place, we needed to change the uh, right the RSA public key, the access token, and the product ID. Those three parameters had to be changed. And finally, as we emphasized earlier, this license key has to be changed as well. And a good practice is to or actually, let's say a bad practice is to hard code. So you should never hard code this uh, any licenses in um, in your product. And uh, the only uh, way this should work is that you either provide your customers with a text box or with uh, if you're building console apps with some other types of input options. So that was it. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you would. Um, have any issues with this code, you can just um, uh, look at this um, troubleshooting guide or uh, ask uh, questions in uh, using the this uh, chat box here. Thanks a lot for watching this tutorial and good luck.